Hello and welcome to Tutoring Potential. Today we are covering the Florida Geometry end of course, starting with number 32. I'm going to try and get to the end here. 32 states. Let me just zoom in one click. Two boxes in the shape of rectangular prisms. A and B are shown below. How much more volume does box A hold than box B? Well, we're going to find the volumes of both boxes. For a rectangular prism, volume is length times width times height. So uh, 5 times 6 times 3 is 90 cubic feet for box A. And then 5 times 5 times 2 is 50 cubic feet for box B and we subtract the difference to get 40 cubic feet. A right pyramid is four inches tall and has a square base with six inch size. What is the volume of the pyramid? Okay, um, I like when they ask just to find the volume of a shape and you just use the formula. Um, one third base times height, where here the area of the base is square, so it's gonna be side, side squared. One third, six times six, uh, and the height is 4 times 4. So we have a volume of 48. 12 times 4. Lisa is helping her parents prepare lunch. Okay, we have two cans. A can of tuna and a can of soup. It wants to know which of the following is true regarding the volume of the two cans. For the can of tuna, it's half the height of the soup can, but its radius is twice the soup can. So what I do is I pick some dimensions. I pick the tuna, the radius is two, the soup will be half of that of one. You could use numbers as long as, whatever you want, as long as this is half of this, and this is twice that. So I pick the height of three and the height of six. So the volume of the soup will be uh, pi r squared h, pi times one squared is one, times six is six pi. For the tuna is pi r squared h, 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12 pi. So the volume of the tuna is twice the volume of the soup. The volume of the tuna can is twice the volume of the soup can. And that comes from, if I double the height, I'm going to double the, ra double the volume. But if I double the radius, I'm going to quadruple times 4 the volume. So the, the sort of net effect is doubling. Uh, for the tuna. A lot of volume on this test. We have two cones, a small planter and a large planter. The small planter has a radius of two and a half inches and a volume of 78.54 cubic inches. All right, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna solve for the height of the small planter because I'm gonna need that. So what I use is, I use the number they give me, 78.54, is equal to, and then I use the formula for the volume of a cone, one-third pi r squared h. And when I multiply this out, 3.14 times 2.5 squared divided by 3. So a 6.5416 repeating, 78.54 divided by that, 6.5416 repeating, gives me a height of 12. Okay. The large planter has the same height, so there's a height of 12, but the radius is doubled. The radius is 5. What is the volume of the large planter? Well, 1 third pi, now I use 5 for r, 5 squared h. Uh, 25 times 12, well, let me do this, 12 over 3 is 4, that's 100 pi, which is 3.14.16. Uh, there is an easier way to do this. Let me do 314.16 divided by the volume of the small planner and that gives me four. Basically, if I again, if I double the radius, that's going to be four times the volume, and then I just do four times 78.54, and that'll give me 314.16.
and 1600s. Uh, this is a surface area of rectangular solids question. Box two is a third as tall, a third as wide, and a third as deep as box one. And that's going to ask us questions about surface area. So what I do for the small one is I pick one, one, one. And because it's a third, each dimension will be three, three, three. It doesn't have to be cubes, but this make this is the simplest. So surface area here is surface area is six times the square of the side. So this would be um, so three squared is nine times six is fifty four, and this is one squared is one times six is six. So the surface area of box of the big of the, the surface area of the small box is one ninth of the surface area of this box because six is one ninth of fifty four. Six equals one ninth of fifty four and that's what I'm solving for. Alright, we have a figure, two parallel lines and two transversals. We want to show the sum of the interior angles of ABC is 180. Well, we know it's a triangle. Basically, the question mark is here. I am going to effectively ignore everything. I'm, I'll include three, but everything under there. F and K is given. If two parallels are cut by a transversal, the pairs of alternate interior angles are congruent. So we have to identify the alternate interior angles. They are angle D, B, A, and angle uh, that's DBA and BAC and the other is angle EBC and angle BCA and then I go down to the answer choices and I have I match them BAC is equal to ABD, which is the same as DBA, and BCA is equal to CBE, which is the same as EBC. So basically, you're identifying alternate interior angles. And right, we didn't need we didn't need all this. So in these proof questions, where they put the question mark, you either that's that's these are the statements we're looking at. Otherwise, you get bogged down, take a lot of time. All right. Now we're going to get to a little bit of trig. Now, I don't necessarily agree with putting your trig functions into a geometry test such as this, but real quick, Sakatoa, right? Sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. Now either they have to give you common angles like 30, 60, 45, 90, or you get to use a calculator, which is the case, or they give you um, tables, which I don't think is the case. We want to know x. I've redrawn the triangle. Basically what I have is if I split the angle, right, if I do the angle bisect, I'll hit the opposite side. So that's the opposite. The hypotenuse is always opposite the right angle. So the sine of x is equal to 74 over 131. So what I'm going to do is use your calculator. Uh, and it must, it'll probably be second sign or shift sign, whatever you have. Sh shift sign. Mine adds the parenthesis, yours may not, 74 divided by 131, and this, and I get 34.39, which is 34.4. Now, you're saying, for what, what angle has the ratio of opposite over the hypotenuse equal to 74 over 131? The sine of what, you're always taking the sine, cosine, or tangent of an angle. 
So you're saying the sine of what angle is this ratio, as opposed to uh, what, what is the ratio given a, an angle. The aviary at the zoo contains two birdhouses. All right, here's two birdhouses. We've got, I've redrawn this triangle. There's a string between them. So it looks like this. This is 2344x. It wants to know how long the string is. So what I write across from the, the angle named or given is here's our opposite. Our hypotenuse is always across from the right angle and then the adjacent side is here. So what I'm dealing with is the ones that are given, which are, even though it's a variable, our, our hypotenuse and our adjacent. So that tells us we're using cosine. The cosine of 44 equals 23 over what number? So I multiply both sides by x. x times the cosine of 44 equals 23 divided by both sides by the cosine of 44. 23 divided by, I'll use parenthesis, cosine 44. That means I have to end the parenthesis. And that gives me about 32. 32 feet. All right, here we go, last one. Robert is building a model of a doghouse with two con congruent right angles up here. What should the support, what should this height, basically what should the height be? Here's the height A. I've drawn just one side. Now, assuming these are, they're too congruent, uh, so I don't have to assume these are equal, which means that these angles are equal, and it means that this A will bisect the angle, which is what we want. So, which also means that the altitude, right, the altitude bisects um, this 18 inch sort of base. So this side, that's why this side is 9. That side is 9 and not 18. 58. So I have, this is my opposite. There's the hypotenuse. This is the adjacent. So I have the opposite and the adjacent. So I'll use tangent. Tangent 58 equals A over 9. Multiply both sides by 9. 9 times the tangent 58 degrees. 9 times tangent 58 Enter 14.4 inches. Okay, so uh, there looks like there will be a few trig functions on there, um, but not enough to not enough to make it so that you can't get a good grade, uh, even if you don't completely understand the trig functions. For trig, just know Sakato and what that means. Right, the ratios, the sides and how to use the calculator to get the um, to find the angle or to find the ratio and that that's basically all the trig you need to know um, the algebra that's in there is that wants you to know the equi the equation of a circle and to pick the center and the hypotenuse from that uh, let's see the proofs uh, you basically are looking at where where the question mark is, or which which step they're asking about, and then just maybe the steps right before and right after. Uh, you don't have to really do the whole proof. Basically, what happens is there's some extra information in these questions. Uh, the figures are a little more complicated than they need to be. Right? We don't need this whole base. We don't need any of this. Uh, so let's see if I can find some more examples. Um, so we've got conditional statements, midpoint formula, distance formula. Uh, parallel lines and transversals, big on alternate interior angles, not as big on chords and tangents. Um, it wants you to know, you should know the names of the figures, polygons with sides, you know, 4 through 10. So basically a quadrilateral through your decagon um, and how to find the interior angle, how to find the sum of the interior angles. Similarity. A little bit of similarity, not as much triangle congruence. There's a little bit on there, um, but those are the things we go over. Any questions, please comment, ask questions. Uh, I'll try and get back to them. I know the test is coming right up, so this is the last minute. And um, thanks for watching, and I will make some more videos shortly. Thanks.